This is a bit different from the studio, huh? Welcome to the first of my vlog tutorials. What's a vlog tutorial? Well, it's a vlog and it's a tutorial all in the one. And today I'm going to go to Tullymore Forest Park to get some autumn colours. And you're going to see exactly the whole behind the scenes. How I do the photo, how I set up the photo and how I edit the photo all in a short video. Hope you enjoy. Let's do this. more forest park and it is looking still pretty green like it's almost the end of November and it's still looking really really green which is pretty surprising considering a lot of photographers I know arrived here last week to photograph here so you can just imagine how green it was last week but look at what I'm looking at so far haven't been here since I was a kid looking forward to it I think everyone and their dog is here at the minute I picked the wrong time to come down should have been here this morning, but I was too lazy, so staying in bed. I really did pick the wrong time to come here, I think. There's quite a few people here, but the place is stunning. Like, just look at here. I'm not even far from the entrance, and I've already stopped to take a photo. I'm sat here literally sat down found my first composition do you want to see pretty cool just the bridge in the rocks pretty simple like but the green rocks is what I'm actually attracted to so the settings I'm using are one second F8 ISO 50 This is like Lord of the Rings. It's just, just watch where I'm about to go into now. <laughs> oh, this is class. So good, so good. So many opportunities to take photographs of. Just waiting for Frodo to just to jump out around the corner or Gandalf and slag my beard off. Don't slag my beard off, Gandalf. No. Not a bad spot, eh? Not a bad spot. I find it really difficult to not want to photograph everything they see in front of me. Take, for instance, what I'm seeing right now. You could do so much with that. But I just have to be selective as what I'm choosing and pick the best compositions. Picked a good time to come here too. Lovely weather. Cloudy weather is the best for forestry because you have no sun penetrating the trees and blowing out. Ooh, what's he doing there? You're not penetrating, the sun's not penetrating the trees, ruining your shot. Composition number two, done. Uh, pretty simple, ripple coming up straight into it and attracting the eye to the middle of the image. Settings, F8. I don't even know what the settings are. Settings, F8. 0.6 of a second, ISO 200. I don't want too long of an exposure. I have taken a couple of exposures for that and seen which will be the best, but I usually prefer a shorter exposure on a quick running water like this. I'll show you the water now. Just thought I'd sit down here and just kind of discuss my idea for this vlog tutorial, vlog tutorial. Um, I want to do a little bit of a vlog, start into this, you know, get my hands at, at that maybe, and then obviously continue on with the tutorials. So the idea today is going to be 
show you behind the scenes what I'm doing when I'm on a scene doing my photos and then later on I'll take the best photo I get today and I'll show you how I edit that photo and that'll be posted on the day that I post on YouTube so remember I post every Thursday evening on YouTube my new video and that day as well you'll see the brand new photo on my Instagram Facebook and my website my name plus photography equals dot com markduffyphotography.com there's no one here now thank f it's a relief because I'm fed up seeing people looking at me weirdly uh, really not used to this pretty self-conscious at the minute like um, yeah it's going good let's go I have to say this 70D I'm using for vlogging it's pretty heavy I think I might need to get a wider lens because my arm is completely stretched out look totally stretched out for this so I don't know I might have to look at a different lens so I can pull it into my face a bit closer I'm afraid of heights, which means I'm afraid of falling. So that was a test. We'll do it again. You can watch my face when I go over it. Ah. Yeah. Oh yeah. Goals. After doing all that, I need to go get my tripod because I left it for me to do that whole scene. So. There it is. Now, to try and find a composition no one else has done here, that's a challenge. The idea I have here is that I wanna get close to the water. I wanna emphasize them uh, stepping stones. I wanna make them look bigger than what they are. I want the whole thing to look more impressive than what it is. It is really impressive still, like, but, um, oh, the backdrop's really nice. Check out the backdrop. I want to get a photo. I think so. Thomas Heaton style. Where the photograph though? Where the photograph? Hmm. It's really loud, so I don't even know if you're going to hear me, but simple settings, really, really simple composition. You can see here. Let the bridge work as your leading line into the scene, and then you don't want too long of an exposure as well on the water, because there's no need, there's no need. You're going to lose details in the white down here. You're going to lose a lot of details there. You want straight lines here. You want, some, you want some details in the, in the foreground. So that's why I've gone for ISO 800, F-stop 6.3, and 0.8 of a second exposure. Whew. I got a little, <sighs> I'm trying to catch your breath. I got lost on the way back. Uh, from there I took a wrong turn somehow like so uh, This was a different experience for the vlog. I keep looking at the camera. I do apologize. I will get out of that habit uh, This is a different experience to what I'm used to uh, for taking photos um, A lot more difficult, but you yeah, know, hopefully it pays off and uh, the next step now is I'll see you in the studio. So Welcome back to the second part of this vlog tutorial. First we had the vlog now we have the tutorial Vlogtorial. Oh, I know, I know. Down there for dancing, inventing new things right now, inventing new things. So, we're going to show you exactly how I edited the Tullymore Stepping Stones photo through Lightroom. This is going to be a brief overview on how I actually edited the photo together. It's not going to be an in depth 
a tutorial on how I do that. If you want to see stuff like that there, just check out here, or you can just check the links in the description. So let's see how I did this photo. So there's the image we're going to be editing the Tullymore Stepping Stones. I apologise for my voice since recording, I've developed a little bit of a flu, so I apologise. So we're going to go down to the flag section where the three images I have selected I want to edit. That's a, a base level, exposure, uh, shadows and highlights. And I'm going to go up and change the colour temperature. As I just want to boost them yellows. Then I'm going to go down and I'm going to control the highlights by bringing them down and then I'm going to boost some detail in the shadows by bringing the shadows up. After that I'm going to go down to clarity, add just a little bit of clarity and also bring the vibrance up just a little bit too. Then I'm going to go up and boost some of the whites, don't forget to hold alt on these. Not too much on the whites, you don't want to blow all of it. And as well as that now when we go to blacks again you can hold the alt to see what the blacks are looking like but for this image it's very contrasting as it is so i don't want to add too much blacks into that image next i go down to sharpening we're going to add in sharpening to this image and i base the sharpening off the information i have available the important is iso 800 so on the rule of 100 i will change my sharpening to 74 on the amount I'm just going to move this window here to show where I need to have the details in because I want to change the masking. I only want to be sharpening part of this image. And then I just set the illuminance to 26, 74 and 26 equal 100. So next I'm going to go into the illuminance section. Here I can control the brightness and the darkness of each of the color channels. So I'm just going to go through this pretty quickly. Once the luminance is controlled, we then go into saturation. Remember, bring it all back to zero so you have it black and white. So then when you bring in each channel, you can see exactly what it's doing to the image. That's what I'm gonna do. If you double click on the middle of our channel, it'll actually reset it back to zero. And that's what I'm doing here. Next, I'm just going to add in uh, split toning. This adds a great amount of depth into your image. Some people stylize it a lot. You can see that on Instagram. I don't really like that. I just like to add a little bit of punch to my images and I use split toning to do that. see the difference between the two. So here we have before and after, straight out of camera and straight after. So the next thing we do is we just select all the three images and we're going to click all to make sure all the effects are selected and we're going to synchronize the edits I've done from this layer across the other three photos. Now on this layer, I just need just a little bit of tweaking, so I'm going to brighten it up just a little bit on the highlights, but I also want to bring them shadows down just because I want to control more contrast when I bring this into Photoshop. So to bring this into Photoshop, just highlight the tree, scroll up to edit, and then scroll down to open as layers in Photoshop. So I'm just going to quickly show you what I did in Photoshop here. I'm not going to go through full details. I have shown you before in this, but to be honest, it's personal taste when it comes to this. So there is no right way, no wrong way to do this. This is dodging and burning. What you do is not necessarily what I will do and what I do is not necessarily what you will do. It all is dependent on your taste and what suits the photograph. So I hope you enjoyed that. It, 
it was a bit of fun to put this together. It's something new I'm kind of thinking of. It, you know, the training wheels really are still on me at the minute. I'm just getting my feet together. I find it very difficult at Tullymore because one, I was there at the wrong time. There's too many people around me. Um, it's so difficult to actually do a vlog. I didn't realize how difficult it is to actually, even just when you're just, you're there and you're, you're recording your composition, you're, you're thinking of the composition you want to photograph, but you're also trying to think of the composition of your video in yourself to explain what you're doing. It's, it's, it's so weird, two parts of the brain working at the same time. Um, I am a drummer, as the drum kit is not in the shot, but you know, you've seen it in other videos. I am a drummer, so multitasking is no problem for me. So I will just, it's just a, it's just a case of just getting it there, getting it slowly there and getting the muscle memory to remember what I'm doing. I will get more comfortable. This is gonna get much better, but I think I'm onto a good thing here. You know, doing the vlogs and doing the tutorials, nobody else is doing it. Hence why I've started it, vlogtorial. Yeah, I might put that as a hashtag on Instagram, hashtag vlogtorial, what do you think? No, yeah, it's not cool enough yet. Um, hope you liked that, hope you got something from it. If you did, like that button, hit the subscribe button to see more videos like this. I post every Thursday evening, so ring that bell to get notified when I do post. Uh, you can check me out on Facebook, Instagram, and my site, my name, plus photography equals.com, markduffyphotography.com. Until the next time, later gators. These little things here are the most annoying things. They fall off, they don't stay on the mic all that much. But thankfully they're easy to put back on again. So annoying. Right, it nearly ruined my chi. It nearly ruined my chi, but we won't let it distract me. Boom!